Well hey guys, I've had my carburetors reconditioned by EB Engineering at a cost of £350 and what I've had done to them is I've had them converted from wax stack carburetors to non wax stack carburetors and overall I'd say it's well worth the money. Um, I had them done originally because the car wasn't running right, it tended to run a little bit lumpy and interestingly enough when I sent them away to EB Engineering and Edward on the phone said to me, these carburetors were set up with 1500 needles, not 1850. So it's clear to me at some point in this car's life that somebody has come along and put 1500 carburetors on the car and not set them up correctly. So anyway, let's get these carburetors now set up correctly back on the car. So there we go, the old temporary TR7 carburetors removed, which let's face it, got wrong needles in them anyway, but it was just a case of getting going for the time being. And the new, or reconditioned should we say, Triumph Dolomite 1850 carburetors put back on. So now it's just a case of opening them up a little bit on the butterflies, starting up the car, and then obviously balancing and tuning them. Well there we are, the carburetors are all set up and she's running like a sewing machine. The only thing I've got left to do is put the airbox on and take her out for a road test. But before I do that, I just want to share a little bit of information with you guys on how I set up carburetors. So moving it onto the bench is the easiest way I can show you how I set up carburetors. And the way I do them is, firstly, is I get a base setting on the jets and a base setting on the actual butterflies themselves. Now I do this so that basically the car will start up first time, we hope, fingers crossed. And the way I do this is as a pair, but I'm only going to show it just as one carburetor, is I would take off the dash part on both carburetors, which on these HS4 carburetors have three bolts. You can only refit these one way so you don't have to worry about them going offset. 
when it does come to refitting that is. But yeah, the dash pot there removed. Put to one side carefully. Got to remember with all fuel systems, cleanliness is key. You must always be clean and thorough with them because a little bit of dirt can cause a lot of grief. So to get my base setting, I will turn this nut here, which turns the jet upwards. And looking down on it, it would be turning it in an anti-clockwise manner. That would raise the jet. And what I want for my base settings, and I've done this to many of Triumphs and MGs, and it seems to work, is I want to get that the jet level with the Venturi. You don't want it above the Venturi, you want it level. And I can do this by eye because I've done it so many times. But if you're unsure, maybe use a screwdriver to just gently rub across the top and see whether it's level or not with the Venturi. If it's too high, just turn it clockwise and that'll turn it down a little bit. Once it's level with the Venturi, then all I ever do is turn it two or three flats so that would literally be flats of the jet here so one two three that would be enough and then return the dash pots in place as I said to you before you can only put the dash pots in one direction as I will show you because if I put them the same with the pistons, they've got a groove in them, so they can only go in one way. So, as you see there, that's the way it goes. It can't screw in that way because the holes are wrong. It can't screw in that way because the holes be wrong. It can only go in one way. So, we'll put those back together. and just tighten them up with a screwdriver. And you only want to pinch these up. You don't want them to be massively tight nor massively loose because you're only turning them into an aluminium block. So if you over tighten them, you can strip the threads. So it's just a question of judgment really. Just a little pinch is enough. Now the next thing I'd do, now these carburetors off the TR7 don't have spring loaders to hold the butterflies back, they just flop about all over the place. They rely on a spring that goes onto the inlet manifold, so not particularly brilliant for demonstration purposes, but you can get the general idea. The carburetors are refished to the 1850 are sprung loaded, like the choke here is sprung loaded, it just returns back to where it should do. But you'll just have to imagine for demonstration purposes. So the next thing I'd do is I'd turn this all the way until there was no tension on the butterfly at all and then visually by eye watching it open so I can just about feel it open there then I'd turn it either half, one, half, two, and that's enough to allow a bit of airflow down through the carburetors. Now I do that to both carburetors, and then topping up the oil in the dash pot, so we top that up. Now different people say different things, some people say you use SU oil, I personally use engine oil, Different people will tell you different things. The weight of the oil will change the way that the carburetors perform. There's no question of a doubt about that. Lighter oil, they'll go up and down more quicker. Heavier weight oil will take less time to go up. It has a different effect on the engine. Really, you need to read into oil to do whatever suits you. So, 
we've got to start up the car next and we need to get the car started ideally we need to reconnect the throttle linkage and the choke linkage and just pinch them up to get us going once we get the car up to operating temperature because we can't tune them before that the car won't work it won't be right until the car is at operating temperature we must tune these at operating temperature so once it is then at operating temperature we can then play around with our carburetor settings and at that point we loosen off all our linkages make sure they're all loose because now we're doing these two as individual and we need to make sure firstly that the airflow is balanced between them now you can use two different types of airflow balance tools there's also the Krypton balance tool which I'm sure many of the older viewers will be aware of or heard of these are the two that I use I use this style or this style too many people get obsessed with the numbers on these there's no point because what you're looking for is a balance in airflow between the two carburetors that's all you want you don't need to worry about airflow obviously the lower the number the better that's why usually I try and recommend using one of these because they don't confuse you with numbers so the first thing we want to do is we want to be putting this tool on each carburetor individually and we want to be balancing the airflow through the idle adjustment screw which is that one that we just turned two turns round and between each adjustment as the uh, great MG mechanic John Twist used to say rev it up and blow it out can't stress that enough every time you adjust a carburetor rev it up blow it out let it blow its fuel through the system let it breathe between each adjustment so we put the carburetor tuner on sorry carburetor balancer I mean and we'd be looking for the same airflow on each one and turning up and down our adjustments until we've got the same airflow once we've got that airflow we can then back these off a little bit at a time and between every adjustment revving up blowing out and lower it down until we get our idle setting about right and once we've reached that nice idle setting between 850 and 1200 whatever your car desires to be then we can then move on to our mixture setting now mixture there's more than you know one way to skin a cat it's way more ways than one to skin a cat some people like using these tools this is a color tune personally I don't really get on with them that well I, ha I have used them I have got them in my toolbox I do occasionally refer to them but I don't find they work particularly well for worn out engines so I don't tend to use them that much some people get on with them really well I don't mixture is done as such you can either do it with one of these color tunes and adjust the nut underneath you turn it anti-clockwise to lean it looking down on the carburetor anti-clockwise to lean it clockwise to enrich in it the way I do it might be different to you but you can either use these little plungers on the side of the carburetor to just lift up the piston into the dash pot we can use a screwdriver which is how I do it and what we're doing with the engine running is we just lift up the dash pot a little bit and we're listening for a change in note in the engine what we want is for the rev range just to raise 50 rpm and then settle down if it increases in rpm keeps going up and again between each adjustment stress it again rev it up blow it out between each adjustment we adjust it down and if it starts raising in an RPM we're too rich we need to lean it off so turning this bottom not here 
and if it starts to stumble and fall we need to enrich in it so we need to draw this down the jet down a little bit and until we get that beautiful 50 rpm and then back down again we've got to keep adjusting it until we get that and as I stress it again and again every time you adjust that nut check it rev it up blow it out recheck it Recheck your airflow and rev it up and blow it out between every single adjustment. It can probably take you 10 minutes to do this. If you do it day in, day out, it'll probably take you less time. It could take you an hour to do it. Everybody's different how they learn and how they adjust stuff. But you'll get there by taking your time and being patient with it. Once you've got these set up, then we can lock off our throttle linkages and we can lock off our choke linkages. Before we do lock off the choke linkage, this is only my personal way of doing things, I like just to have a little bit of adjustment, just enough just to lift the butterflies up. I literally just do adjust them that much. Um, fortunately, these carburetors don't seem to have the adjustment shown on them um, and adjusted bar because it's actually part of the throttle linkage some do some don't they're all different but what I generally like to do oh they do I'm telling a pork pie um, is this little screw just here is I just turn it back to about a feeler gauge gap away from this cam here so when the cam turns and it is literally just a feeler gauge gap and locked off with this nut. So when the cam turns, all it does is lower the choke, lower this, this jet a bit more to enrich in the fuel, as you can see. And it just allows a little bit more air into the carburetor, and that is a feeler gauge gap, that adjustment. That's important to do, otherwise you'll be trying to start your car while using you accelerate the pedal and it will just keep stalling. And that is literally it for adjusting twin SU carburetors other than making sure that your throttle cable and choke cable are set up nicely and have about the right amount of slack. Again, that's down to the individual. When you put the air cleaners on, don't forget that these have little air bleeds at the top carburetors you can put them on the wrong way and that will cause you a lot of trouble so always remember to put them the right way up I'm going to leave a link to John Twist's video of University Motors because he does an excellent explanation of this while the car is running because I work outside on my driveway it's very difficult to do a decent video of this so I've done the best I can with what I've got and I hope that this helps out people out there well, I hope you enjoyed that. It's good to get out in the Dolomite because I don't often use this car. And it's a real shame, really, because this is a 43,000 miles from new car. And I know that to be true because I've actually owned this car twice. I brought it in around about 2005 and then sold it. And I brought it again. So I'm actually the fourth owner, I believe it is, in the logbook. I was nearly the second owner in the logbook and I'm now also the ninth owner in logbook. And it's one of those sorts of cars where I've never known what to do for the best for this car because it's got 43,000 miles from new. It's like a time warp. The first owner owned it until something like 2002 and it was just his daily drive in North Wales. And I don't really want to restore it because restoring it would lose part of the history of what it is. So reconditioning parts like the carburetors and fitting them back to the car, I'm all okay with. But a full restoration, I'm never really quite sure whether to go down that path because you lose a lot of the originality with it. It's quite a charming little car. It was actually my second classic car I brought. So you know, I've got a bit of sentimental history with this car. But I'd be interested in knowing what you guys think in the comments box below. But anyway, as always guys, 
don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.